Good morning, it's uh, a lovely day in early April 2023 and here we are at Brooklyn's Museum in front of the Vickers Viking, which I'm going to be talking about today. Uh, my name's Bill Risbridger, I am the uh, leader of a, a small project team. This is the project team here behind me who are slowly but surely restoring the aircraft or at least trying to preserve it um, for the future. So I'm going to take you now on a little walk around the aircraft just to show you where we are and uh, what our plans are for the future. So if we like to step this way. So the Viking, this particular aircraft was built in 1946. Uh, she was number 12 of uh, 163 that were built. Um, Vickers built this at, uh, at the Brooklyn site um, as they did with all the other Vikings. Um, it was a stopgap aircraft. It was um, built immediately after the war uh, and it, the idea was to, to, to fill the gap between wartime production and the early 50s when the Viscount, the, the Vickers Viscount, would be going in production. So they needed something they could build fairly quickly and fairly easily and, and this was it, the Viking. Um, it used a lot of Wellington parts, at least, at least initially, because the Vickers, in order to speed up production and development, wanted to use parts that they already had. So, um, in its very early days, it had the Wellington wing, and it was fabric covered, like the Wellington, although the fuselage was, was um, a stress skin construction and was, was a brand new design. Uh, it's got some Warwick uh, features as well, particularly in the tail. Uh, the Warwick was a development of the Wellington, so it uh, used parts from that as well. Um, this is the only one now left in the UK. She's 77 years old, um, so it's a miracle that she's still here. Um, altogether, there are six Vikings left in the world. Uh, as I say, this is the only one in the UK. However, she's shortly to be joined in the UK by uh, another Viking that's um, being brought back from Vienna um, to Blackbush Airport uh, early next month, uh, and that will be the subject of a, a restoration project as well. So, um, if we just step towards the aircraft, it was built uh, as a short-haul aircraft, so it was intended for domestic services uh, and for European services. Um, so short to medium haul uh, aircraft. In its, this is the Viking 1A, which was the very early design, uh, and it was designed to carry 21 passengers in quite a degree of comfort. It would have been pretty much all first class in those days and plenty of leg room, certainly probably better than, than uh, you, what you would get today in a, an economy seat on, on uh, uh, a modern airline today. So just um, finishing with the outside, um, this aircraft was initially operated by BEA, British European Airways, and it would have flown from Northolt Aerodrome. Um, when used by BEA, it was natural aluminium. It wasn't painted at all, other than it had all the BEA logos on it. We've had to paint it silver. We did paint strip it right back initially when uh, it was displayed in a hangar, but um, eventually, due to lack of hangar space, it's been uh, taken outside, and it's now in the Brooklyn's Aircraft Park. Because it sits outside, we've had to paint it in order to protect it. Um, and, and that's why she's um, painted up in silver. Um, she's pretty much complete now on the outside. Um, we've had a fair bit to do. Uh, with, with an aircraft of this age, and particularly where it's sitting outside all the time, it's a never ending task. There's always something to do. You know, you're, you're forever fighting corrosion. Uh, and, and there's, um, I don't think we'll ever get to a stage where we can say it's finished. Uh, there will always be something more to do. And uh, we get into a stage now, we've been working on this aircraft for over 20 years, where things that we did initially we're now having to redo uh, just be, you know, because of the uh, aging process of the aircraft. But um, anyway, if we'd like to have a walk inside. So here we are inside the Viking. As you can see, uh, it still requires a lot of work and we're only really in the early days of starting to restore the interior. One of the first problems, the initial problems that we've had is that it's got a number of uh, small holes in the fuselage and it leaks. Um, so we're, we're having to deal with those leaks before we can really do anything else. Um, Dealing with the leaks is not as easy as you might think. Uh, even finding the leaks can be problematic, but we're working on those. We've got rid of most of them now, uh, and there's uh, still a couple more to deal with. Again, if it was inside, if it was in a hangar, the leaks wouldn't be a problem, but because it's outside, um, we do have to make her watertight. 
So as you can see, um, fuselage, it, um, it, uh, it was designed, as I said before, to carry 21 passengers. So um, interesting feature of this aircraft was the wing spar. As you can see, the wing spar went right through the middle of the aircraft. Um, so passengers had to climb over the wing spar in order to get to the forward cabin. But I'll explain that in more detail in a minute. If we go ahead, we'll start with the, uh, the cockpit. It wasn't open plan like this. Um, so this will be the cockpit. Um, in its uh, when operated in by BEA, it would have had three um, three crew working in here. You'd have the captain on the left, first officer on the right, and just about here would be the radio operator. So there would be a large radio rack here uh, with um, several large boxes, as they were in those days, uh, for for the radio operator. We do have most of those radio um, boxes and they will be restored in due course. We also have made up a replica radio rack that will be going in here in due course. Um, the centre console, we have a centre console. It's off a of Varsity, but it's very, very similar to a Viking. The only giveaway, if you look closely at one of the levers, it says Bombay Doors, which of course the Viking would never have had. But that will go in in due course. We also do have the instrument panel uh, for the front here and over the top. That's in store at the moment. It's in our radiation store because like most instruments from that era, they used a paint that was slightly radioactive. Uh, and so it's uh, locked away. Uh, one of our initial problems in terms of working in the cockpit is the windows. Um, although they're pretty much, they are original, they all leak at the moment around the edges and you can see, you can see the mess and the corrosion that causes. So we're, um, if you look outside, a colleague of mine at the moment out there, we're putting scaffolding up at the moment so that we can take all of these windows out, um, clean everything up, uh, treat the corrosion, paint them, and then put all the windows back in uh, and make them watertight. In heavy rain, the rain does leak in here quite quite a lot and it gets very wet inside, which is of course something we've, we've got to stop. So um, so that's uh, what we're working on, the, on at the moment, is making the windows watertight. Um, once that's complete, we've got to put, um, this was a hatch. Um, they called it a crew hatch. I don't think the crew used it very often. They probably came in by the main passenger door, but there was a crew hatch here and you can see another hatch underneath. That will be replaced and we'll put that back in. Um, that gives you a quick glimpse into the hold. The hold was for carrying cargo and uh, obviously passengers bags. By modern standards, a very small hold, but um, Vickers in their advertising at the time, at, uh, referred to it as capacious um, I guess it was for the era so just about here in fact you can see the line just there this is where the the bulkhead will be put back in uh, and that will divide off the cockpit from the uh, from the passenger cabin so that has to go back in and there will be a doorway here um, so the forward part of the passenger cabin goes from the wing spar to where the, the bulkhead will be here. And in its original format, there were six seats in here. Um, the seats were large, they were comfortable. You had two on this side and one on this side, and they, the, uh, the first row were rear-facing seats. Uh, and then we had another two seats here, another single seat there, and they were forward-facing. And then uh, between the seats, there were tables, a bit like you would find on a train today, particularly in first class. Um, uh, and the, tra the tables themselves were made of um, well, like a dark wood uh, and they had fold down trays, very similar to the trays that you get in a modern aircraft. The seats had uh, lights built into them and they reclined all, uh, and they had levers that you pulled so you could recline the seats. And, you know, for six seats, it was a fairly large area here. So you flew in a, in a degree of comfort. Um, then if we go into the rear fuselage, sorry, the rear passenger cabin, in here, this is a much larger cabin, there were a further 15 seats in here. Again, the first row were rear facing with tables and then all the remainder of the seats from the, the back of the cabin to here were forward facing. Uh, now, we have manufactured the six seats that are going to go into the forward 
uh, passenger cabin. We had one original uh, and we've restored that uh, and we've used that as a pattern to make another five replicas. They're all made up, they're ready to go in and they're in store at the moment. That is probably as far as we're going to go in terms of putting the seats back in as it's just too big a job really to manufacture 21 seats. So the plan is that the forward cabin here will be restored to its original condition. So we will be putting all the linings back in, we'll put the insulation in, we'll put the linings back in uh, and, and, and try to get it as near as we can back to its 1946 condition. Um, we will do the same with the cockpit as well. The rear uh, cabin will be restored to an extent but it will be left open plan and what we plan to do then is use this as a display area where we can have uh, memorabilia, artefacts, anything that relates to a Viking on display and it will give enough room for visitors to walk around, see, have a look inside there and look over the, um, the wing spar and through the, through the doorway there and look at the restored cabin. As you can see on the Viking, the windows were square, which you would never see today in a modern airliner. And that was because the Viking is unpressurised. Um, you can't have square windows in a pressurised aircraft as it cause, uh, causes um, structural problems in the, uh, in the aircraft. And uh, as, as the Comet and de Havilland found out when they developed the Comet, uh, the Comet it causes cracking and eventually failure in the fuselage. So uh, always a bit of a giveaway. If you've got square windows, it's uh, generally an unpressurised aircraft. Um, this will all be painted on the inside. Uh, we've got insulation. Uh, we will be putting some insulation in. One of the problems we're trying to deal with at the moment is in the winter in particular, and on very cold days, we get an awful lot of condensation building up inside, which drips down onto the floor. I'm not 100% sure if we'll be able to cure that entirely, but we're gonna try and uh, reduce that as far as possible. Again, just to preserve the interior fabric of the aircraft by trying to keep it as dry as possible. We do have a dehumidifier in here that runs all the time, particularly in the winter, and we'll probably add a second one. Um, the floor was originally plywood uh, when we inherited the aircraft uh, from Cosford, which is where it had been stored before coming to Brooklands. Um, it still had the original flooring, but it was a, a very, very thin, around about a six millimeter ply. It was in quite a bad condition. It was quite deteriorated. So that was taken out and we've replaced it with a modern aircraft flooring. Not entirely accurate, but it's very hard wearing. It, uh, it's, it, um, it doesn't matter if you make it wet or it gets damp. So uh, it will be covered in carpet eventually so it's 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 a practical solution uh, and it's um, it should last a long time also we were able to get it for nothing which uh, when you have a very low budget like we do getting something for nothing is always a, a bit of a bonus um, if we make our way back towards the rear uh, of the cabin cabin passenger cabin um, in here was a very small galley uh, nothing remains of that unfortunately, it's just an empty room at the moment, a little bit untidy in there, we're using it for storage, but uh, eventually we would like to put something in there to give it uh, some sort of semblance of its original layout uh, with, with, with um, some kitchen uh, equipment. And then behind that was the toilet, which was in here, again nothing remains. Um, if we go back to 1963, this aircraft was parked up in South End, having uh, Channel Airways had just retired it. Um, so it went to South End where it was parked up for a while, and then it was bought by um, a Dutch man who owned um, a cafe in Holland in a, in a town called Susterberg. And he bought three of these Vikings. Uh, he shipped them out, I think they were flown out to Holland, and he set them up um, by the side of a busy main road uh, that travels through Susterberg, and he turned them, uh, the three of them into a cafeteria. So quite a novel concept, you would um, sit in here uh, and eat lunch or whatever it may be. Now that was great in as much as the uh, three Vikings were preserved, they would have been scrapped otherwise, and in fact two of them, this one and one other, still remain. Um, the downside to that was the cafe owner stripped everything out, as you can see, which is why we don't have 
galley equipment anymore. We don't have the toilets, you know, we don't have the seats in here. He stripped everything out so he could maximise the amount of tables and chairs he could get in here for his customers. So, yes, he preserved the aircraft. Unfortunately, the interior, as I say, was, uh, was stripped and pretty much everything is gone. Um, <laughs> when we first started working on this aircraft, particularly in the hold, we recovered literally hundreds of uh, ketchup sachets and brown sauce sachets, knives, forks, utensils, all left over from its days as a cafe when it was, um, and obviously these things fell to the bottom of the aircraft and just lay in the hold for years. Also a lot of fat, probably chip fat or some other type of fat, which probably was a good thing as it acted as a preservative and the hold is in a pretty good condition. Um, overall, the aircraft, bearing in mind its age, 77 years, is in very, very good condition. It's got some uh, corrosion, particularly in the wing spar, which is very, very difficult for us to get to without stripping the panels off the wings. Um, we have treated it as best we can internally. I mentioned uh, earlier that there is another Viking shortly to arrive in the UK. In fact, that was number 13 off the production line, so it followed this down the Vic Vickers production line. Uh, it was also one of the Vikings that was preserved at Susterberg as a, a cafeteria. That ended up in Vienna, uh, and in fact it ended up in a McDonald's restaurant where it sat outside and it was used as a children's play area. Um, a small team have um, uh, been put together, uh, and, and they're bringing that Viking back to the UK. Uh, they've fortunately had some funding from British Airways uh, to pay for the cost of the transportation, which is not insignificant. Uh, one of the nice things about the Viking is it comes apart. It's like a big Meccano kit. You can take it apart. You can take the wings off. You can take the tail plane off. You can take everything apart. So you can strip it down, put it on the back of a large low loader, and you can transport it relatively straightforwardly. Uh, so that's due to arrive at Blackbush, um, either the end of this month or early next month. Uh, we've been in fairly close contact with that team um, to give them the benefit of our experience, and uh, we will be obviously helping them as, as much as we can. Uh, so we look forward to have a, having a second Viking um, in the UK. The other four still remaining in the world, uh, there's one in, uh, in Islamabad uh, in the um, Pakistani Air Force Museum, which of all the six Vikings still left is probably the, the best preserved one. It's inside, its interior is complete, um, and it's in nice condition. If you go onto YouTube, you can actually do a, a virtual tour. I don't think it's YouTube, but certainly if you go online, you can do a virtual tour of the inside of the Viking, which is, if you're interested in the Viking, is, is well worthwhile. Uh, the other three remaining are, there's one in Argentina, which I don't know very much about, but that was a Viking 1B, which was a slightly later model of this. Uh, there is one in Malouse in Switzerland, which is uh, has been partially restored. I last saw it 20 years ago. I'm told since then it's been partially restored and it's currently up for sale if anybody's interested and then there's one more viking which is in johannesburg in south africa and there is a team slowly restoring that as well uh, and again we're in fairly regular contact with that team uh, and, and we discuss what we're doing um, the one in johannesburg ended up on the roof of uh, a garage um, uh, a petrol station stroke garage um, eventually it was brought down from the roof uh, and as I say it's undergoing restoration and they've just finished their cockpit and they've done a very nice job of it too. So um, yeah six left. Um, just as a side note there was actually a military version of the Viking which was the Valletta. Um, there was 163 Vikings built, there were 263 Valettas built but only two now remain both of which are in the UK. Uh, a later um, development of the Viking was the Varsity and we have one of those here at Brooklyn's Museum. Um, it was quite a development so for example it had a nose wheel instead of a tail wheel uh, and there are a few of those left around the world. So this year um, we have made up ducting um, which is not here at the moment it's in store but um, in its original format there was metal ducting that went the whole length of the cabin fuselage and built into the ducting uh, was cabin lighting it was also uh, used for uh, ventilation as well so we've remade all that ducting and that's ready to go back in we luckily, fortunately, had one original light fitting, which is very Art Deco when you look at it, and we've been able to use that to 
manufacture uh, six or seven other light fittings, ident they're all identical, so they will be fitted into the ducting. Uh, also this year, we're hoping to rewire the whole aircraft as well. We've got, we did uh, rewire the hold maybe, maybe 20 years ago with 12 volt lighting. Uh, it's halogen, which of course nobody uses now. So um, this will be rewired uh, with a 12 volt system uh, and we will use modern LED just because it's easier to put in. Um, it's uh, obviously the parts are easy to get. It will look original but we will use modern led lighting and uh, we'll also at the same time as well as putting the cabin original cabin lighting back in we want to put some additional lighting in uh, for display purposes as the cabin lighting in itself probably won't be sufficient um, so that's hopefully going to happen during the summer the other thing that's going to happen uh, hopefully in the early summer is we're going to put all the markings back on um, if you've seen the outside of the Viking at the moment, it's just plain silver. So we're working on, on um, or designing and getting our measurements right and designs right for the outside um, markings. And so if you were to visit, certainly by mid or late summer, hopefully she'll be back in all in, in her uh, British European Airways markings. Um, once we've got the cockpit windows done, then we should be continue to work on the cockpit and uh, on the main cabin itself, putting the... Uh, insulation back in and, and possibly starting on the cabin linings as well. Well I hope you've enjoyed this quick uh, resume of um, what the work that we're carrying out on the Viking at the moment um, and in due course we'll give you an update uh, just to show you progress as as we continue on. Um, thank you.